Bye. Can I get a coffee? Hi, I'm Tom Foster and this is my Corner of the Nerve Centre where I draw 2000 AD's internationally recognised characters such as Judge Dredd and others. It's an exciting process and today for a few thrilling minutes you can join in too. It's like Rolf's Cartoon Club except hopefully we'll be framed more sympathetically by history. But what do I do in this crazy place? What kind of a job is drawing pictures? Find out. It all starts with a computer, where Tom prepares his layouts in not two, but three dimensions. By planning his compositions with 3D posing software, he can achieve dramatic staging and lighting without the constraints of learning to draw properly. At the layout stage, storytelling is of paramount importance, and Tom regularly consults the script to ensure he's left nothing out. Unfortunately, we can't reveal details of this story, as Judge Dredd's storylines are hot property and subject to the strictest secrecy. Upon receipt of a new script, Tom must sign a non-disclosure agreement, a waiver relinquishing his statutory rights, and the Official Secrets Act. A court order is also filed against him, and a super injunction imposed on all news outlets. Once he has signed the requisite paperwork and contacted his parole officer, he's free to service the script as he sees fit. Okay. Love you. Bye. Tom must plan his shots in such a way that they will not only have good compositions individually, but will also sit well together on a page. To this end, he'll often draw a rough thumbnail sketch of the whole page to keep him on track. It's just one of the many stabilizers screwed to the bicycle of his creative abilities. Once happy with the look of his panels, he will import them into Photoshop, where he'll add filters to make them more easy to interpret as line drawings. An extra few wheels on the training bike. He'll then arrange them into a page template and print them out, all shiny. Using a light pad, Tom deftly sidesteps the risk of creative thought by tracing the basic dimensions of the figures and other organic shapes on the page. Most of the simpler geometry he doesn't even bother to touch. This allows him the luxury of focusing on the parts of his work he finds the most enjoyable. However, even here there's room for idleness and Tom relies heavily on online image searches and an extensive library of reference books. These allow him to achieve realistic detail and give him inspiration. After tracing, the real drawing begins. Fundamental drawing skills are the bread and Nutella of the comic book artist. It doesn't matter how good you are with a computer, if you can't draw, you're rubbish. And Tom takes this principle to heart. This stage of penciling is, in many ways, the most mentally demanding part of the work, where skill and creative deduction are tested to their limits, and where years of not socialising begin to pay off. Attention to detail is all important, and Foster spends many hours being precious about details that don't enhance the story, and will go largely unnoticed. Like this wicker basket. It can be a draining process, and it's during this time that Tom will most likely begin to feel frustrated and underqualified. For the sake of the readership, these doubts are soon put aside and replaced with a kind of blind complacency. <sighs> Once the penciling on a page is as complete as he feels he can handle, Tom scans it, composites it with his original layout to fill in the gaps, and prints it out again. This time on Bristol board, ready for inking. Although much of the original line work is computer generated, everything is painstakingly delineated by hand for the sake of visual consistency. Computer renderings may be technically perfect, but Foster's keen eye and deft fingers are capable of feats no computer could ever understand. 
even if you gave it a billion years and masses of RAM. Conventional inking tools take years to master, but there's more to inking than just fannying around with some brushes and technical pens. The professional inker has all kinds of tricks up his filthy sleeve. Under normal circumstances, Tom would never be allowed to hold a knife, but today is special. He's getting to cut out a template for a splatter effect. He places this over the page and proceeds to flick spots of ink at the exposed area. This begins as a calm, methodical technique, but it soon degenerates, and all the years of pain and self-loathing start to come to the surface. The bullying, the unrequited love. All of a sudden, that Bristol board is the face of an enemy, the ink some kind of toxic chemical that kills on contact with the skin. Ostensibly, he's using this method to emulate the look of TV static, but spiritually, a thousand specks of anguish have just left his body, and the burden of dealing with them has been passed on to the reader. Now that the work is all inked, it's time to add colour. This starts with a process called flatting, whereby Foster must tediously separate every area of colour in preparation for doing more detailed rendering. Many professional colorists hire a dog's body, or flatter, to do this for them. Tom is but a pauper and can scarce afford such fripperies, but there's something therapeutic in this process as it provides another welcome break from creative thinking. Once it is done, Tom proceeds to add depth and texture by daubing color around like a big toddler. <laughs> Don't go over the lines now, Tom. The modern school of thought regarding comics colouring often involves the use of slick digital effects to add dynamism to the visuals, but like all right-minded people, Foster despises change. Thus, he continues old colouring traditions that have long since been perceived as redundant, such as basing his colouring choices on the 124 colours used in the traditional comics printing process. For many readers, this may induce a comfortable sense of familiarity. But for Foster, whose life so revolves around visuals, he may as well be crawling back into the womb. The page is done and ready to send to the editor for lettering. It looks great, but what of the mind behind the artwork? An artist will face many struggles and not all of them will be about wicker or how big to make a female character's breasts. There is, in addition, a silent struggle. Many artists are plagued by addiction and Foster is no exception. While others may face alcoholism or compulsive gambling, Foster deals with very real dependencies on being inconsiderate to people who care about him and never doing any exercise. These tortures take their toll, but the dividend is his brilliant mind, capable of producing pages of original artwork that annually number in double figures. Despite the hardships of sitting down for almost all of the day, Foster is quite content with his lot. It's a bumpy road, but he wouldn't have it any other way. In fact, he'd be happy if they dug up the road and just left it as a big, dirty mass of land full of broken old cobbles. That'd suit him just fine. Well, that's all I have to give. Take care.